two days ago, we did a demonstration in class where we showed you what a standing wave looked like. A standing wave is a wave that occurs, a wave that appears to be standing still, that occurs as a result of interference between waves that are going in one direction, waves that are going in the opposite direction. So you got waves that are coming down from this end. You got waves that are coming back from this end. Maybe the wave is reflected off of the other end. Maybe it's just a new wave. It doesn't really matter. If we send those waves at just the right frequency, then the interference pattern of those two waves, the interference pattern that we figure out by adding and subtracting waves together, right? superposition principle that we did a few days ago, makes it look like the wave is standing still. What you end up getting is something that looks like this. Or you end up getting something that looks like this. Or something else. But it looks like the wave is standing still. There are a number of different possibilities of these standing waves that can occur. A number of different harmonics, we call them. They all correspond to the natural frequencies of the string, or the resonant frequencies of the string. When you pluck the guitar string, there's a whole bunch of different frequencies that are generated in that guitar string. But most of them disappear really quickly. Most of them die out really quickly. The only ones that stick around, the only ones that stay in the guitar string and still vibrating in the guitar string, would be the resonant frequencies of the string, which would correspond to these standing waves. So what do those all look like? Okay, I've given you a couple examples there. But what do they all look like in order? Well, the first one would look like this. We've got what we call, what do we call this at the end here, where, the, where it's a fixed point? You guys remember that? A node, good. In the middle, where it's not a fixed point, where it's the big bump in the middle, you call it? An antinode, good. So you've got two nodes, one at either end, you get an antinode in the middle. Now, in the two nodes, the string literally is at rest. It's not moving anywhere at the two nodes. At the antinode, it's going back and forth between the top and the bottom. It just looks like it's at rest because it's doing it so quickly. The next possibility that we would see would be this one. Here we have two antinodes. We had one antinode in the first case, now we have two antinodes. Next one, we'd have three antinodes, or something like this. And the next one, of course, we have four antinodes. You could keep going with this, five, six, seven, eight antinodes, but it doesn't really matter past this because the pattern is the same. And that's really what we want to get out of this, is the pattern that forms here. Let's define, as we did yesterday, the length of the string as L. Now, let's determine what L is relative to the wavelength. Let's draw that wave over here again. That's a half of a wave, right? There's another wave, like another half of a wave, so a complete wave. There's oops. Three halves of a wave. In other words, one and a half waves. There's four halves of a wave. Two complete waves, and so on and so on and so on. When we look at this diagram up here, we can see that that's half of a wave. Look at the crest there. It's half of a wave. Right? We're following this along here. Goes to there. That's a half of a wavelength. So we're going to say that L is equal to one half lambda, or rearrange that, and we get two times L. This next one. We go all the way to there. That's a complete wave. So we're going to say L is equal to lambda, or if we want to just switch the order of that, we can say lambda is equal to L. For the next one, well, we're going all the way to here. That's three halves, or one and a half waves. So we're going to say L is equal to three halves lambda, or lambda, if we rearrange that, two goes up, three goes down, two thirds, two thirds times L. And finally, the last one, we're going all the way over to here, which is two complete waves. Or if we look at the diagram on the right-hand side here, we'll call it 4 over 2 times lambda. So L is 4 over 2 times lambda, which means that lambda is equal to 2 over 4 times L. Now, let's take my wave equation. Remember V is equal to F times lambda that we learned here, I don't know, a week and a, before the break anyways. V is equal to F times lambda. Rearrange it. 
f is equal to v over lambda. We're going to say here that f is equal to v over 2L, because that's lambda. Here we're going to say f is equal to uh, v over, well, L, or we could say 2 over 2L. Here we're going to say f is equal to v over 2 thirds L, right? v over lambda, v over 2 thirds L, or we can simplify that a little bit, becomes 3v over 2L. And this one, do the same thing, v over 2 over 4L, which becomes 4v over 2L. So, what do we notice here? The first one that's made, the first standing wave that's made in the string, the demonstration that we did two days ago, or the guitar string that maybe you pluck when you're playing the guitar, the first standing wave that's there would occur at the speed of the wave divided by two times the length of the wave. We talked yesterday about how you might change the resonant frequency of that string in a guitar. Two ways. Put your finger on a fret. What are you doing when you're putting your finger on a fret? you're changing the length of the string. You're shortening the string. As L gets smaller, F gets bigger. The, the standing wave that's produced, the resonant frequency becomes bigger. So, L gets smaller by putting your finger on a fret, F is going to get bigger. Frequency is going to get bigger. And we know that when you put your finger on a fret, you hear a higher pitch in the guitar string. V, how do we change V? Well, change the tension in the string. Tighten it. Right, tighten it with those little tuning things, or loosen it. If you tighten it, you make the speed of the wave in that string higher. It increases. So if it increases, that's going to cause the frequency to increase as well. When you tune that guitar, turn it tighter, what happens? It's a higher pitch, because it's a different, higher standing wave, a different resonant frequency that exists. We call this one, by the way, the first wave that we hear, or see, we call it the first harmonic. Now, somebody yesterday, I can't remember who it was, pointed out that you could also call it something else. Who was that? Yes, Lewis. What else can you call it? Yeah, you can call it the fundamental as well. The second wave that's produced, notice it's twice the first one. Okay. We could say that F2 is equal to 2F1. Because it's twice the value of the first one, we're going to call it the second harmonic. The third one, well, we'd say that F3 is equal to 3 times F1, right? 3V over 2L, the first one was V over 2L. It's 3 times the first one, so we're going to call that the third harmonic. And finally, the last one, 4V over 2L. Well, the first one was V over 2L. 4V over 2L is 4 times that, so we're going to call that the fourth harmonic. Right, F4 would be 4 times F1. Now, we did some problems yesterday in class. We did an example, and then we did some problems on a worksheet in class yesterday. When we did that, we found that we usually didn't need to go through all of the things that we just went through, all of the work that we just did. We found that most times we were able to determine what the first harmonic was, and then just simply multiply it by three or four if we were looking for the third or fourth harmonic. Or if we were given the third harmonic or fourth harmonic and we wanted to find the first, then all we had to do was divide by three or four. All right, you had some questions for homework. Let's see if there's any of those that you need to go over here right now. Okay, five and eight it is. Question number five says, the frequency of the third harmonic of a vibrating string is 1.2 times 10 to the 3 hertz. What's the frequency of the second harmonic? Now, we can derive the equation for the frequency of the second harmonic. We can derive the frequency of the third harmonic. We can, but we don't need to in this question. We know the frequency of the third harmonic. We can determine the frequency of the the first harmonic from that, right? F3 is equal to 3 times F1. We know that F3 is also equal to 3V over 2L, but we don't need that here, and we rarely do. Easier way to do this, F3 is equal to 3 times the first harmonic. Let's find the first harmonic. It's 1 third times F3. So it's 1,200 divided by 3, which becomes 400 hertz. All right, that's not what we're looking for. 
who just found the fundamental, as Lewis called it, or the first harmonic, as I called it. We want the second harmonic. What are we going to do? Yep. Multiply it by 2. F2 is equal to 2 times F1. So we're going to say it's 2 times 400 hertz, which means the answer there is 800 hertz. Whoops, not 8,000. 800 hertz, which by rights we should convert to scientific notation so that we can put it into the right number of significant figures. Two digits. 8.0 times 10 to the 2 hertz. Is that good? How many people got that one? Good. Okay, let's take a look at number 8, was it? Yeah, number 8. Now, this is pretty small, so I'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger for us here. Number 8. The fundamental frequency of a string that's 25 centimeters long is 441 hertz. We want to produce a fundamental frequency with the same string of 525 hertz. It's a guitar, right? It's a guitar. You want to... You pluck the guitar string, you produce a frequency of 441. You want to increase the pitch of the sound to 525 hertz. Where do you have to put your finger on the frets? Right? What fret do you have to press in order to shorten it to the right length to produce this new frequency? So if you play the guitar, you do this. You just might not do the calculation as you're doing it. Okay? You're, you're, you're more on the art side of it as opposed to the science side of it. All right, the one thing that we know stays the same here is what? You've got to be careful here. I thought you were going to say that, actually. As soon as I asked that question, I thought someone was going to say that. We've got to be careful here. Once a sound has been produced, once a wave has been made, the frequency never changes. But we're talking about two different sounds here. Okay, we pluck the guitar string, we shorten the guitar string, and then we pluck it again. Okay, that's a different sound. So the frequency is going to change here because we've changed the resonant frequency of the string. Okay, second chance? Yeah, the speed of the wave. It's the same string. If we tighten the string, the speed will change. If we do something else to the string, maybe it changes. But if we just change the length of the string, the speed stays the same. Okay, again, you thought was good there to some level. Once the sound has been made, frequency makes frequency stays the same. But we're talking about two different sounds here. So 441 stays 441. But then when we make a new sound, it's 525. Speed stays the same. So let's analyze the long string, or sorry, the short string, get the speed of the wave, and then let's analyze the long string using the speed of the wave that we got for the short string. Fundamental frequency. There's my wave. We know that the length of that wave is half of lambda. We know that lambda is equal to 2 times L. We know that F is equal to V over lambda, or F is equal to V over 2 times L. There's my equation for the fundamental frequency of the first harmonic. Let's rearrange that to solve for V now. V is equal to 2L times F. So it's 2 times 0 0.25 meters, we always got to be in meters here, times the frequency of 441 hertz. What do we get for the speed of the wave in that short string? 220.5 meters per second. Is that good? Go ahead. Uh, it should be 0.25. Is that right? Okay, so the speed is 220.5 meters per second. Now, let's look at the long string now. Same string, but after we've put our finger on the fret to make it, uh, sorry, after we've taken our finger off the fret, I should say. Oh, what are we doing here? You know what, actually, let's change this. This wasn't a short and long string. We don't know which one's a short string and which one's a long string, right? First one is the low frequency, and the second one is the high frequency, sorry. Actually, it ends up being the other way around for the length of the string, right? The low frequency is going to be the long string. The high frequency is going to be the short string. 
So the first one, the low frequency, the 441 hertz, this is the speed of the wave. Now, for the high frequency, it's going to be the same speed because it's the same string. We're going to use the same equation, f is equal to v over 2l. But this time we're going to solve for l. The l has to go up by multiplying. So it becomes l times f is equal to v over 2. And the f goes down by dividing. So it becomes l is equal to v over 2f. Listen, whenever you have a variable on the bottom and you want to get it by itself, just take it up, just swap. You take the L up, the F down, switch places, L is equal to V over 2F. The speed, 220.5 meters per second that we got from the first part of the question. The frequency that we want to produce is 525 hertz. Since we want to make a higher frequency, we will need a shorter string. When we calculate this length of the string, I'll bet you anything that the length that we're going to get is going to be smaller than the length that we started with. What do we end up getting there, Carrie? Centimeters? 0 0.21 meters or 21 centimeters, which is 4 centimeters shorter than what we started with. Right, we want to go to a higher pitch. We need to make the string shorter. We do that, if it's a guitar, by putting our finger on a fret. Got it? That makes sense. Next thing you see up on the board, this is new now. Same stuff, but new example of it. This is what we call an air column. An air column is like a lot of different musical instruments where you have an open end and a closed end. You blow into it, and you produce a sound. Maybe it's this water bottle that I'm holding in my hand right now. There's an air column. These are on their side. This is right side up. It's right side up so that I don't pour the water out of it. Same thing, though, right? Blow across the top of this water bottle. <laughs> Just like in the guitar string when you pluck it, you produce a whole bunch of different frequencies. I produce a whole bunch of different frequencies when I blow across the top of this. But most of them, just like in the guitar string, die away. The only ones that stick around are resonant frequencies, standing waves. Now, the standing waves in the guitar string, you can't really see, but you're, you're closer to being able to see them in the guitar string than you are here. Because there, it's a physical string, visible string, that is vibrating. Here, it's air that's vibrating inside this water bottle. As the air vibrates inside the water bottle, it produces standing waves, just like in the demonstration I did for you two days ago, just like in the guitar string. You just can't physically see it because you can't see the air. But what do those standing waves look like? And how can we predict what frequencies this will occur at? Well, we have to draw the diagrams and derive the equations, just like we did for the string. But it looks a little bit different. When we have an air column, like a water bottle, we have a node at the closed end, but we have an anti-node at the open end. I'd love to show you a demonstration of this, just like I did with the two fixed ends, like the guitar string, two days ago. But I can't show it to you because you can't see it. It's air vibrating. It's air producing the waves. Just like you can't see the sound waves that are coming from my throat right now to your ears. Okay, you're not going to see them inside the water bottle or inside a musical instrument either. But this is what it would look like if you could see it. Remember when we had a guitar fixed at both ends? We had a node at both ends. But when we have something that's open at one end, we have an anti-node at the open end and a node at the closed end. That would be the first harmonic. The next one that we would see, and be very careful with this, the next one that we would see would look like this. Remember, we have to have a node at the fixed end, the closed end, and we have to have an anti-node at the next end, the other end, the open end. So the next possibility is going to look like this. 
okay, if we had have drawn this as our next possibility, well, that wouldn't have worked. Right? That wouldn't have worked as our next possibility because we would have had a node at an open end. And it physically doesn't work that way. One antinode, one node. Two antinodes, two nodes. Next one's going to have three antinodes and three nodes. The easiest way to draw this is probably recognizing that there's one more anti-node, sorry, one more node than there was before. Here we had two nodes, here we have three nodes. Draw the nodes in, and then just kind of connect the dots with your anti-nodes like I did. We could keep drawing it. We could draw four anti-nodes, five anti-nodes, six anti-nodes, so on and so on, but we don't need to because the pattern is the same. The length of this water bottle, or whatever air column it is, is L, just the same as the length of the guitar string was L. Let's draw a complete wave over here. Just like we did when we were analyzing the uh, guitar string. This is a half of a wave. This is a full wave, or two halves of a wave. This is three halves or one and a half waves, two complete waves right here, or four to four over two times lambda. What do you have in the first diagram? How much of the wave do you see there in the first diagram, Lewis? It's a quarter, right? We're not going all the way to a half of a wave. We're going right here. Okay, that's the first one. So that's actually going to be not a half of a wave. That's going to be a quarter of a wave. Or lambda is equal to 4 times L. Remember when we had the guitar string or the two fixed ends string that was attached to both ends, L was equal to a half a lambda. Now it's equal to a quarter of a lambda. What about the next one? Well, for the next one, we're going down to here. What's that going to be? It's not a half lambda. It's not a complete lambda. It's going to be how much of a wave? Three quarters, right? L is equal to three quarters lambda. Or we rearrange that. The four goes up, the three goes down, becomes four thirds L. Next one. Well, let's take it all the way up to here. How much is that? How much of a wave is that? If we go trace that through. Here, that would be one complete wave, right? We're going one complete wave and then another, Stephanie? Another quarter. So we could say it's one and a quarter. Or to maintain the pattern, we're actually going to say it's five over four times lambda. It's not wrong to say one and a quarter or 1.25, but you see the pattern a little bit easier if we say four, five over four. Lambda would be equal to, well, 4 goes up, the 5 goes down, becomes 4 over 5 times L. Let's get rid of this now. Let's derive our equation now from our wave equation that we did yesterday. F is equal to V over lambda. Well, lambda is 4L, so we're going to say F is equal to V over 4L. For the first one. F is equal to V over lambda. F is equal to V over 4 thirds L for this one, because lambda is 4 thirds L. We could simplify that and say F is equal to 3V over 4L. And finally, for the last one, F is equal to V over 4 over 5L, because lambda is 4 fifths L. Simplify it. 5V over 4L. What do you notice about the pattern here? Remember, when we drew these ones out, 
we found that the second one was twice the value of the first one, the third one was three times the value of the first one, the fourth one was four times the value of the first one, and so on. What do we notice about the pattern in this one, where we have the, the water bottle, or the one open, one closed end? Well, the first one, V over 4L, was V over 2L for the guitar string. But that's okay. It just means that the re first resonant frequency, the first standing wave that's produced in a water bottle, is different than the first standing wave that's produced in a guitar. That's okay. We're still going to call it the fundamental frequency, or the first harmonic. It's the first standing wave that will occur. Now, how does this one relate to this one? Is it twice as big? V over 4L, 3V over 4, three times as big, isn't it? It's not the second harmonic. Even though it's the second standing wave that's made, it's not the second harmonic. It's the third harmonic. And why do we call it the third harmonic? Because it's three times the value of the first harmonic. This one is five times the value, so it's called the fifth harmonic. Where's the second? Where's the fourth? Chris? That's a good question. I'm not sure about that, actually. Good question. What do you call it, the first one or the second one? Where's the second harmonic? Where's the fourth harmonic? There is none. They can't exist. It can't physically exist in the real world. When you have a guitar string, you can get one, two, three, four, five, six harmonics. When you have a water bottle or some other musical instrument that's closed at one end and open at the other, you have first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, you can't get the even numbered harmonics. They don't exist. There is half the resonant frequencies in a water bottle than there is in the guitar. So it's not crazy hard still. Okay, if you manage to deal with the guitar string problems that we looked at yesterday, this isn't much harder. But you do have to remember a couple of things. Number one, the fundamental frequency is different. The first harmonic was V over 2L for the guitar. For the water bottle, it's V over 4L. Number two, if you're asked for the second sound heard, you don't multiply the, the first harmonic by two. The second sound heard in a water bottle, you'd multiply the first harmonic by three. Because the second sound isn't the second harmonic. The second sound is the third harmonic. Does that make sense? What about an instrument where we have two open ends? Hey, by the way, one quick more, one quick thing before I go at that one. Where's that water bottle? Over here. Blow into this water bottle produces this sound, right? How would I change the pitch of that sound? Change my change the way I breathe across the top of it? No, it's not going to change anything. I mean, it might change the quality of the sound, right? But the pitch is the same. Bart, how would I change the pitch of the sound? What's one way? Drink some water. Pitch is lower, right? Drink some more water. Pitch is even lower. Why does the pitch get lower when I drink water? Why does the pitch get lower, Carrie, when I drink water? Okay, so there's more... Way. The air column is longer, right? The sound reflects off of the boundary between the air and the water. The air column is longer. If L is bigger, F gets smaller. It's a lower pitch. Okay, what's another way that the frequency could change? 
speed of the wave, right? The speed of the sound. The speed of the sound changes with temperature. So as it gets colder, the speed goes down and the frequency would go down as well. So be interesting, actually. Okay, if we get a day uh, next week that's minus 20, you should take a water bottle and go outside. <laughs> Listen for the sound. Record it. Come back in. Put it in, in here where it's plus 20. <laughs> we should hear a slightly different sound. Okay, because the speed of the sound when it's warmer is higher. Therefore, the frequency should be higher. Does that make sense? Okay, we get a day that's minus 20. Remind me to do that, okay? We'll go outside and we'll do that and record those sounds. Okay. Here's our final instrument. I'm not even sure what kind of instrument this would be. Two open ends. You, you play a, a tuba, and the closed end is basically your mouth. The open end is the other end of the tuba. Right? Is there a musical instrument that has two open ends? A flute? Does a flute have two open ends? Or is it closed at one end? Okay. But it, but the flute itself, like the tube, is it one open or, or, or two open ends? I think one end is closed, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. But it's, yeah. I, yeah, I'm not sure actually. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. If I knew my musical instruments better, I'd be able to tell you that better. Bottom line is, maybe it's just a pipe. Okay, you're blowing across the end of a pipe. Instead of a water bottle, you blow across the end of the pipe. What do the standing waves look like there, or the resonant frequencies look like there? Well, the first one, remember, at, an, at a fixed end, at a closed end, we have to have a node. At an open end, we have to have an antinode. So it's going to look like this, an antinode at this end, and an antinode at this end. This time we have two antinodes, one node. How many nodes are we going to have next time? Two nodes. And three antinodes. Next time we're going to have three nodes. And four antinodes. So remember. If you've got a closed or a fixed end, you've got to have a node. If you've got an open end, you've got to have an anti-node. Here's the length of the air column, the length of the pipe that you're blowing across the end of. L is equal to a half of a wave there, or lambda is equal to 2L. Lambda is equal to a complete wave here, right? We go from crest all the way back to crest. Lambda is equal to L. Or L is equal to lambda, I should say. Rearrange that. And we get lambda is equal to L. Here we go. This one looks confusing. Let's trace it here. That's one complete wave. There's another half. So we're going to say L is equal to one and a half, or three over two times lambda. Just stop writing just for a second. I'm going to flip this page, but I'll come back to it, okay? Look at those. Okay, look at those values. Lambda is 2L. Lambda is L. Lambda is 2 thirds L. Here it was different, right? But here it was, lambda is, is 2L. Uh, sorry. Yeah, lambda is 2L. Lambda is L. Lambda is 2 thirds L. It's exactly the same when we have two fixed ends like a guitar, is if we have two open ends like a pipe. So the frequencies that are going to be produced here are the same as the frequencies that are going to be produced in the guitar. We're going to say F is equal to V over lambda. F is equal to V over 2L. F is equal to V over L here. F is equal to V over 2 thirds L. Or F is equal to 3V over 2L. This one we're going to call our first harmonic, or our fundamental. This is twice the value of the first one, so it's our second harmonic. And the second harmonic is, of course, say F2 is equal to 2 times F1. The third harmonic is 3 times the value of the first one.
So if you got two open ends, the equations are the same as if you have two fixed ends, like a guitar. Now the sound would be different because the speed of the wave in air is different than the speed of the wave in a guitar string. But the equations are the same. If both ends are the same, then the equations are first, second, third harmonic. If both ends are different, like we had right here, then the equations represent the first, third, and fifth harmonic. Okay? Does that make sense? There's a lot here, right? We look at the equations from back here. We look at this, and then we look at this. There seems like a lot here. But in the end, what do we got to remember? We got to remember for the guitar string that F is equal to V over 2L for the first harmonic. The second harmonic is twice that. The third harmonic is three times that. For the two open ends, same deal. For the closed end, F is equal to V over 4L. And then there isn't a second, but there is a third. So multiply the first one by 3, then by 5, then by 7. That's it. That's all we've got to remember. Let's do a problem. And then we'll set you free on some problems to work on yourself again. What are the frequencies of the first two harmonics observed in a 40 centimeter long air column if the temperature of the air is 30 degrees Celsius? This actually requires us to use an equation. That relates the temperature of the air to the speed of the sound. The speed of sound is 332 meters per second at standard pressure. The speed of sound is 332 meters per second plus 0 0.6 times the temperature in degrees Celsius. So we want to find the speed of the sound, 332 plus 0 0.6 times 30 degrees Celsius. Do the math there, I think it works out to be 350 meters per second. There's the speed. Now, we should have been told in this question whether it was a closed air column or an open air column. We'll assume a closed air column. A closed air column means one end open, one end closed. An open air column means both ends are open. It's a closed air column. We want to find the first two harmonics. Let's draw it out here. Okay, there's the first one. L is equal to one quarter lambda. Lambda is equal to 4L. F is equal to V over lambda, or F is equal to V over 4L. Let's figure out what the frequency is. 350 divided by 4 times the length, which is 0 0.40. 218.75. Or we'll say three digits, 219 hertz. There's the first harmonic. Okay, it's a closed air column. It means it's one open end, one closed end. An open air column would be both open ends. Now, what's the second harmonic? The second sound, I shouldn't say the second harmonic. What's the second sound that's heard? We could draw it out, we could derive the equation. Or we could remember that when you have a closed air column, the next one you hear is how many times the first one? Three times. So we're going to say the third harmonic is three times the first harmonic, three times 218.75, which gives us 656 hertz. If this was a guitar, then the second one would be twice the first one. Since it's not, it's three times the first one. It's not really harder than yesterday. It's just a different equation, and there is no second and fourth like there was yesterday. Right? How do you feel about that? You were absent yesterday, right? Going okay? Not bad? Stephanie? A little iffy? Okay, we're going to have you guys work on some problems now. Everybody can stop me and ask me questions, but especially the people that weren't here yesterday. Okay. Um, what I want you to work on right now is uh, the worksheet that you got yesterday. If you flip it to the second page of the worksheet, 
I'd like you to do 1 to 8. 1 to 8, which is all of them, I guess. Remember, a couple of things. If it's a closed error column, it's one open end, one closed. This is a closed error column. This is an open air column. And in addition to that, remember that if you need the speed of sound related to the temperature, speed is 332 plus 0 0.6 times T. All right, so let's tackle those questions now on that second worksheet, page 3 and page 4 of the booklet that I gave you yesterday.